Hello, Ozzy. Hi, how are you doing? I'm fine, and you? Very good, thank you. Glad to see you. Uh, I'm nice to see you too, and, and, and to meet you as well. Yes, Even if it's pleasure. over Zoom. <laughs> yeah, for now, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, where are you at the moment? Uh, well, I normally live in New York, travel a lot, but I am now in Israel, actually, where I was born and I'm from. Uh, yeah. Concerts actually are starting in Israel. It's a, been doing quite well with uh, vaccinating the population. So I, I got the vaccine, thankfully, and the concert halls are opening. And yeah, I mean, it's still with restrictions, but um, it's nice. So for the uh, coming months and a half, I, I, I will be in Israel. Oh, wonderful. So um, yeah. what are the, the restrictions that you have now? For this for the concerts for the concerts uh so for the time being uh, it depends on the size of the hall uh so the bigger the hall uh more people could enter they're trying to adhere so only people that have been getting the vaccine could could come in i believe that five percent of of the, those people if they present a negative test could enter um and there are about 300 to 500 people allowed um, indoors, outdoors in greater numbers, but they are talking about as the time progresses um, and hopefully there are no uh, big, big, bigger spread of the virus that they would allow for more and more audience to, to come to the concerts, which is nice. Yeah, isn't it wonderful to think that, you know, that it's it's becoming this now where where at least they are there can be a concert and there's there can be some uh, solution to to how you can do it yes oh yeah I'm, um i think it's a bit late um but of course in retrospect it's very easy to say uh, we could have done a b c um, but I feel also that finally uh, the governments are understanding how vital the arts and music um, uh, is to really to as a society. It's really it's so important, um, and it's so wonderful to see that finally we could not only play live streams. You know that you play in a big hall and there is only a camera and the recording crew and no audience, despite many people maybe listening from their computer or laptop. Uh, but finally, that you have this uh, interaction um, with the audience. I mean, of course, you don't come and hug after the concert still. But um, when the audience is actively listening, there is something um, very interesting in the air. And you feel it as a performer. And I really, truly believe it pushes you to, to play even better, so to, to reach even greater heights. Um, so it's really, it's like oxygen for us performers. And imagine not to have had it uh, or to have it in very small doses between lockdowns, uh, to finally have it, it's, it's really terrific. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that a lot, uh, you know, where, where um, artists say it, it's that, that's almost that energy uh, that you get from the, from the audience as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 something that you cannot describe the words, but you know when they are really actively listening, um, it causes you to be even more spontaneous, uh, like having a conversation. It's 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 the same thing. Um, you, you really feel it when, uh, and it really pushes it. I'm sure the conductor and the orchestras would say the same thing. Every performer that you cannot put it into words, but it really pushes you. Yeah, I, I actually heard somebody say, uh, a singer say that the, the sound is also quite different uh, when, the, yeah. when the hall is empty and, you know, and, and when there are people. Yeah, usually good halls, when they, when they hire a good uh, acoustician uh, advisor, they are trying to build them for when there is audience in the hall. And of course, the sound, it, it goes to the close. I mean, everything, it dampens. So sometimes... You could play in wonderful halls now, uh, but it's too boomy because usually when there are people, the sound is, is it carries very, very differently. Um, 
But of course, at the end of the day, a good hall sounds good with or without people. It's just that for us, we want to see a full auditorium rather than, you know, I mean, for now it's still with mm -hmm. um, not as full hall, but hopefully now I do think that a year later, we are finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. So I, I, I think that that's an opening that will won't be any more closure. I think if we act very um, responsibly um, as a society, we will finally, uh, we are seeing some kind of an end. I mean, we would live with this for a while, but uh, yeah. the arts will come back finally. Mm. Uh, slowly, but but surely there will be a um, now, uh, you know, maybe more light, as you say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ozzy, I I just want to pick up my my little Lily. Oh, <laughs> hello! <laughs> How adorable. <laughs> when I when I talk to somebody, she wants to lie on my lap. <laughs> Oh, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, but let's carry on. Um, so, but you were not in, in Israel during lockdown, were you in New York? Um, so I was first in, in New York um, and at the very, very beginning, actually, um, I, I had concerts planned in Israel. So, I, and they were still happening because it was the very, very beginning. And I managed to play, uh, it was a tour with an orchestra. And I remember that at, at that time, it was quite bad in China. And in fact, late, I mean, it was, we are speaking about end of February, beginning of March. Uh, in May, I was supposed to go to China. And I remember I was still thinking, will I be able to go or not? Um, and to Italy in March. And also I was not sure, it, it was so ambiguous at the time how severe the situation is. Um, so I, I had this trip plan and then I was supposed to go back to New York. Um, but then things got quite bad. Um, and I decided at the time that it was unsafe and unwise to travel. Um, and I decided to stay in Israel. Um, so I actually did experience some lockdowns uh, here as well. Um, but I was also lucky enough uh, to do, to have had, I mean, so as you can imagine, uh, so many concerts and tours have been canceled, but then bet in between the lockdowns, uh, some, a lot of opportunity also arose. So. Um, I managed to play a, a quite a number of concerts, some of them even with audience in between the lockdown and, and a lot of uh, a lot of recordings. Um, and then even to travel a bit for concerts, um, which was at first quite scary because, you know, you don't know what to expect. Um, but I was very, very careful and and of course had Corona pass in when leaving and when arriving and had to be in quarantine in our hotel room, which was not the most pleasant experience. Nevertheless, it allowed me time to practice. <laughs> yeah. um, and well, I was quite amazed that people were not as careful actually in traveling, um, oh, really? which is quite surprising. Yeah, you, one would imagine that, that everybody would be very careful. It was not really the case, but I Maybe I was too careful, but I at all times had the mask on. I didn't drink or eat anything. Um, and but I think the most difficult thing for me is, you know, so I traveled to play with, with an orchestra and you meet a conductor, you have to, it's very normal to, to come and discuss ideas or to shake hands or to give a hug. It's, it was, you all the time have to remind yourself, no, you can't. Um, and of course, what, when, what we mostly feel is, of course, the orchestras have to be spread out so much. They can't even, they can't sit next, next to each other. So it's only one person in, per pulled. Sound is, speaking about different sound without the audience, is very different sound when the orchestra is spread out like that. Uh, I think it takes time for the conductor, the orchestra, but also for the soloist to, to get accustomed to that. It's quite strange. Um, I think that would be an, an interesting way how would that, you know, going back to it, because they have to listen much more right now. They are so far apart. You, everybody has to be at the edge of their seat. You can, because you really have to be together. 
So it, it I think, develops a, a deeper sense of listening because uh, it really takes you out of your comfort zone. Uh, so I think when we will finally get back that the orchestra would sit properly and without masks in some countries, uh, it would it will help. So maybe there is, I mean, there is no blessing here at all, but maybe blessing in disguise, yeah. I wonder really if, if um, the fact that the arts were so affected, I mean, yeah. all industries were affected, but for example, um, uh, I think if I if I see here at the Staatsoper how extremely careful they are and and cautious they are of, uh, and even amongst the artists there, you know, really uh, being very aware, um, and and as you say now, you know, you were amazed at how people just didn't care, but that because yeah. you are so affected that you are, you know, the the risk is then so big that everybody in the theater or, or all the artists who, who get together are really very cautious about this, you know, and, and, and try to, to be, be um, uh, following the, the, the guidelines and, and all the measures. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I think we have, we have a responsibility to, if we will not adhere to those rules, um, we would close again. Um, and I think, you know, all, it's a blow after blow and there have been so many institutions, um, long, you know, and very respectful orchestras and, and, and schools and, and concert halls and also individual artists that, that will not be able to survive yet another lockdown. Um, so I think we really have a big, big responsibility to keep it as safe as possible because it is possible. I mean, I, I have even played a concert with an orchestra in a, in, in a hall with, I think there were 500 people at the time, but it was really at the height of Corona. Uh, it was at, in fact the last concert before uh, the second lockdown or was it the, yeah, the second lockdown and nobody got sick. And in those in those row of concerts, people were very very careful, and they really adhered to the rules, and and no no one got sick. It, so it's really a living proof that it is possible to carry the arts. Unfortunately, also throughout history, arts um, always seems like an entertainment, uh, and people forget that. And I truly believe that that uh, art and music it really makes us for a better society. It's vital. Um, and the moment that, that this very basic understanding is missing, art will always be at the very bottom of the list. Um, but it's really important for people. I'm not even speaking only of playing music. It's really of going and experiencing live music making, good live music making. It's, it's so important. People do that a bit with, with art, with visual art. People go, you know, you travel. The very first thing that people do, they go to the museum. Not, not always if they're big art aficionados because they think that they would become better people if they're exposed because visually it's, it's more clear. But it's exactly the same with, with music. It's so, so very, very important. And I'm quite scared that, you know, a lot of young people are, that are missing out on, on the things. We would lose a, a generation that will not be exposed to that. Uh, so very, very important. Uh, so I really hope that now that finally things are opening, um, that's it. You know, that we, it's just will be even more and more opening with more audience and, and we'll be behind it because it's so important for everyone, really. Yeah, I, I agree, totally agree with you. And I, I really try to speak about this a lot uh, because I think that the, the, the solution for me, I think uh, is, is with, the, with the children, with education, because the, in, in generations, you know, every time cut, it, it seems to me, um, every time cuts are made, it, they are made in schools in the art. And yeah. even, you know, even if I think of society, uh, we don't sing that much anymore. We don't, you know, uh, I, d I don't know. I think it's the digital, digital uh, time where, where 
it's easier to be in front of the television or it's easier and not not that i say it's something wrong with that with that and it's also good but but we lose somehow that that um i wonder if we get a little bit lazy because we're just listening and and not singing anymore and children are not playing instruments anymore because we try that the life has become so busy and and the schools have become so complicated that now the the focus is on maths and science and and things like that yeah. where it should really be also on art i i, I couldn't agree more um i i i mean going back a bit i think i to speak that we are a bit lazy i think that indeed we are not only lazy we our attention span became <laughs> quite shorter because i mean if you look at social media things like instagram again i'm nothing against it as long as it's in the right balance uh, but you know everybody has to go in one minute video you have to catch somebody's attention and people are so focused on that little point that they don't see the bigger spectrum of things it's a bit of a of a fake in, in, in many, many ways. Uh, it will be a lovely addition, but it's not a substitute in, in no means. Um, and actually taking it back a bit to also to Corona time is many artists, and I'm not blaming anyone because how would one know how to deal with the situation, but they would record so many of these free concerts very often not well recorded, sometimes due to the situation, but sometimes due to also laziness and for free. Um, and as a basic rule, uh, anyhow, music is viewed very often, not in the highest esteemed, even though it should be. Uh, but then if somebody is playing Bach from their living room, it could be very charming, but if it's not well played and if it's not well recorded and it's offered for free, it really um, it has a very big ramification um, on, on how we will go forward because now people see, oh, well, I could sit at home and I could tune in and tune out of some live concert from a living room and they think it's good enough and they will not go to the concert hall. Um, and it's so important to really experience good live music making and to go to the museums and the computer is terrific. I mean, we ha have access to so much that we never would dream of. Um, but you must, must come out of your comfort zone. And the, you know, the living room and the computer, in, maybe in your pyjama, became a bit so. Um, on the other hand, I think that also people maybe grew sick of it. So maybe it's good because maybe it caused a new hunger. Um, because how much can you view it on your computer? Then you have hunger for this interaction. And perhaps that would be good for, for the arts. That people would realize, oh, I really, really miss it. Um, and I hope that it would show in the concert goers. Um, I'm sure that it, now in the beginning, many people will be, will be very scared to go, understandably so. But I think as time progresses, um it will it will be in the favor of of the arts um and hopefully people will not get lazy as much as you're saying i i, I couldn't agree more I, I wonder if they maybe um also need that interaction you know because it's it's always now just in front of the television and and as you say that's you know it's it's missing that very significant thing and that's that energy between people it's like yeah. i mean we can talk on zoom now but it would be so much different when we could have talked uh sitting at a table across each other and uh, with a cup of coffee for example so yeah, and, and i think people are really missing that you know the really this contact and and this togetherness yeah uh, yeah that's 100 percent true um and I, I, that's again, I, I think that the moment that, and you know, as artists, we have now a very big responsibility because when this is all over, we cannot just expect things to be as, as they used to be. I think each artist has to do a lot of outreach program, have to go to schools and, and meet aspiring musicians and, and non-musicians as important to expose them as much. Uh, and I think it's important also as being a young musician that 
um, this interaction takes place and to do to to meet the audience before for a talk about the music and after um, it, 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 I mean, of course, one musician is not going to change it, but I really believe that we all we, we must do it because the the business, I mean, it's funny to call it a business, but the industry will suffer greatly. Uh, I mean, it's already a lot of orchestras have closed and, and a lot of orchestras are in a very big iffy situation. What will be? So um, I, I choose to be optimistic, but we will we will have to approach things a, a bit differently. This uh, uh, everyone has a bigger responsibility here to really go forth uh, for a much brighter future ahead. I'm so excited that you say that because this is really what I think. I think um, that I have this 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 idea that that if artists can can reach out more uh, and and not just by because I because what I've experienced now from meeting all the artists that I photographed in their windows, I saw a different side of them and. And I saw different. I got this um, different insight also in the industry and what they have to do to to become artists. And I think it's important that we just we we know that as well. Where did it start, or or what is the what is the path? It doesn't have to be dramatic, you know, and and, and sad stories, but it can be really uplifting and it can be encouraging. And I almost think as when when we see the artist on stage, it looks it looks effortless. It looks very easy, and that's uh, that's a good thing. And I don't think we have to take away from that. But I think yeah. it's also important to have that just a little bit more of a of a connection, or or even you know. Um, I, I don't know how to, you know, it's not that I say reveal everything, but, but, you know, a little bit of contact, you know, a little yeah, bit of another uh, layer exposure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think for children, if, for example, I spoke to a ballet dancer uh, the other day who said that he talks to the small town where he comes from. He talks to the, um, the young children at the ballet school there. Um, to tell his story, to tell how he got from that small town to to the ballet company, for example. And I yeah. think for children, the moment when they, they when they think when it's also for them not there, just there, but thinking he came from here as well. He also played in this park, and he also rode with his bike to the to the uh, school yeah. or something like that. And now he, he can live the dream and he can he can be a dancer. But they also have to realize that it, it wasn't an instant. It wasn't like, oh, now he decided he had to also go through things and, and practice and, and things like that, you know. So these stories, I think, is very interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that, you know, being a musician, uh, you it's like you are carrying the torch a bit. You, you're getting the torch. It's a very long journey, and you must pass it on. Um, I was very fortunate to have had terrific teachers, um, and and when I was already at school, they all, they all of course said, you know, it's great to and and you should you know do the career and play concerts, but always teach as well. Um, and at the time, I <laughs> I didn't think much of it. Um, I mean, I was always enjoying to you know if I would to to see some and and hear a young talent if I would go somewhere. But more and more, it, you see how important it is. You, you always have to pass on the information, um, and and and, and I, I got inspired as a youngster. You know, I would go to concerts, um, and you would hear those greats, and and you would sort of sit in in the first row and see up close what they were doing, and you would go home immediately and practice. But it's also, in fact. Yeah, that you would hear of their stories, and it will be a very a big source of inspiration, because it's not it's not an easy. I mean, if we put even Corona aside, being an artist is not easy. I mean, it looks glamorous. I mean, you travel, you get to travel to many places. Oftentimes, you don't see much besides the concert hall and the plane. But um, there is a lot of practicing to be done, 
Um, mm. When you play a, a concerto after concerto, you have to practice five hours a day and you have to rehearse and you have to travel. And, and sometimes it's not even practicing in the small room with four walls. It's about thinking about it. Um, it, it never really, it's, it's not a, a work of nine to five where at five o'clock that's it and, and you, you carry on. It's, the music is always haunting you a bit and you have to think of how to do things better. Um, and and to, to have, uh, so I, 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 the teachers really, it made it, it made it very clear to me and, and very inspiring that I, they would expose you to their life, to their lives and also to their way of approaching it. Um, so it's not only teaching even, I mean, if we're speaking of young musicians, it's not only telling them, oh, you have to, you know, to play a bit like this with the bow, it's a bit out of tune here or take a bit more time here. It's, it's the whole package um, because it takes very big perseverance uh, and mental, um, you know, it's a lot of pressure to, to perform. You have to always adhere for more and you need to find your place in, 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 this, in this place. I mean, there is no, 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 no there, there is no magic here. Um, and I feel that, you know, having a discussion and a dialogue um, between young players about it always helps. Um, and, this, and now, if we are speaking about these times in Corona times, even more important, because um, I can imagine that, I mean, I even know of very fine players that are no longer in music, whether they will come back to it, it's a question afterwards, because there will be places that people would lose their work and at the end of the day, it would come down to money. So I, I truly, yeah. truly hope that, that, that many young players will not get discouraged because at the end of the day, it's really worth it. I don't know if I feel the satisfaction of playing great concert. You, can, you cannot find it anywhere. It's a, something divine, really. So then it really makes it, you know, it's hard, but it, it's at the end, it, it, it's very gratifying. Uh, isn't, uh, who was your first teacher? Um, so um, I first studied with a lovely Russian uh, teacher in Israel, um, really wonderful, uh, that I, I think was very, very good. Also, as it, it really helped not only you know, for teaching the instrument, but also to keeping the love to music and, and search. Um, and I moved on to Chaim Taub, who was the concertmaster of the Israel Philharmonic for, I think, over 30 years. Um, and that's when I, I moved abroad um, and studied with Pinka Zuckerman um, and Aaron Rosanne and, and really wonderful teachers. Um, and you really, that you learn America. a lot. You know, I had great teachers, but, but also when you play with a great conductor or when you play chair music with wonderful people, you all the time learn. Or, I mean, speaking now of, of YouTube, which is great, there's so many great recordings of Kalas or, you know, wonderful singers and, 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 and that's very inspiring. So you, you all the time, you're like a sponge, you, you, you get influences and then you like something and you, and you make something of your own at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. Now, because um, um, it's always interesting for me, the, the um, artists talk about their teachers um, in such a, uh, you know, with such a affectionate way, like the teachers that really meant something or helped them on their way. And, and I think we should name these teachers, you know, we should, we should uh, say who they are and uh, to give that, uh, that way to give recognition. Um, because yeah. I think it's wonderful. I think a teacher, I think the, the teacher who could see the potential in the child and who could not just see the potential but grow this this artistic uh side of of this of the artist you know these teachers should really be applauded for that yeah yeah i i i, I agree with you fully um because because there are at math there are also many people that teach but in fact they don't really do a good job and I really see it almost as a crime <laughs> yes you have to you have to give first of all your most but you also have to be qualified for, for, for the job because um, the art world is suffering greatly anyhow so you have to give as much as you can back 
Um, so indeed, a great teacher is giving life. I mean, because talent is is wonderful, and and you need it. You you cannot you cannot do anything in music without talent. But it's really a small part. You have to have the right teaching, and you have to have the the right way of working on things, and you need luck. So there's a lot of components. But right teaching is very often underestimated. It's so important to do things right. So your life in music, whether it's chair music, orchestra, solo teaching, that it's long lasting because it's it's not easy to have a career of a short span of five years, but to be successful for a long time and to all the time adhere for more, it's 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 not easy. And I I, I think that a, a great teacher somehow has a very big effect on, on that. So yeah. Yeah. Do you do you come from a musical family? Um, yes and no. Um, my well, the official answer is no because my parents are not musicians, but my mother uh, has played the piano um, uh, and she loved music so much and she would take, um, so we, we are four siblings. And so both my, my brother, older brother, older sister played the piano. We had a little upright piano at home uh, and she would expose us to, she would take us to concerts and the music was a very, very big part of, of my upbringing. So I heard a lot of music. Um, so there was no wonder that when I was six, I asked to play an instrument because I would hear, oh, I would hear music all the time. Um, I, and my, they played piano and I would sit in their lesson. I was very young. And then I heard the violin and I, I, I said that, I, that something about the sound of it really attracted me. And I said, that's what I want to play. My mother thought I was too young, but perhaps and why the violin, we have a piano at home. But I was very, very persistent. And the piano teacher of my, my, my siblings said that for my hearing, I had a perfect pitch. It's, would be good to have a violin. Uh, so when I when, when I grew up, everybody played an instrument. Um, maybe it's healthy that only one musician is left in the in the family. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but the love to music is there. Um, yeah. Um, so everybody would, will go to concerts um, and yeah, so it, which is an, another aspect. You know that it's important. Mm -hmm people play an instrument because it grows their appreciation of music exactly even mm -hmm. if even if you don't work at it i mean my sister became an architect and my brother is in a, in, in business and but they still love music uh, they wanted to stop at some point uh, but nevertheless now now they love going to to, to concerts um so if we don't have that exposure to music we, then, then we can't be surprised that we don't see enough young people in the concert halls because exactly. there's just not enough exposure and good exposure. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you could get exposure on social media of you know, somebody playing quite poorly, the violin, the piano, um, and it's one minute. And, and that makes no difference, really. You need to go and hear. I mean, you, you're very lucky. You live in Vienna. I mean, so many wonderful concerts. Mm. Um, people should go there and then when you experience this I, I can't imagine somebody not liking it I mean if you really go to a concert of Vienna Philharmonic and you and there is a great conductor there is magic in the air and it, you don't have to be exposed before to music if you will go and experience it you would love it mm. um, so I, I hope that now in corona time that people were you know, they, they were not exposed to it as much. Uh, hopefully, now that we are opening, people would run for the concerts mm. and it would get even more and more popular. Yeah, I think you, you, you're absolutely right. And I think this is why I'm thinking that if the we should change the education system so that children could be exposed to art in schools, because not many children will have the opportunity at their homes, you know, and, and I think sometimes even in small towns, uh, you know, where it's not not that available or, or uh, where, where the exposure is not like in a city where you can go to a theater, um, yeah. 
and and it's the same with with us we all took maths and science we didn't all become mathematicians and scientists you know and and it's the same with art but yet we understand things and now with this science that's also been done about how music affects the body and how music affects um you know the brain not yeah. just music but all all forms of art i think it's so important that that artists now start definitely talking about this because i think from from the artists the 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 information from the artists should um get out there so that we start thinking um is there a way we can change the system so that children are exposed as you say yeah. to 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 have future audiences but also for their development and also for their mindset for how they they experience life then afterwards you know and after all in music we have everything we have mathematics there is form so there is architecture uh there is every really I mean, if if we look at any field in good music it's there i mean in bass music and it's so the, the forms and and the division is incredible um and it's so if you play an instrument at an early age it doesn't you, you don't have to become it's like perlman you know you 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 can turn into a whole different business but it will help it will help of course i mean i mean i it's, i don't have to even to say it because there it has been proven music affects the brain in amazing ways i mean it develops I mean, really it, it, so it will help your life in whatever field that, that, that you choose um and that's the first step the the, con the concept of how important music is it's not an entertainment absolutely not the moment people will understand that that will be the first step i think that we would go into a new path a, a, a more promising path because um museums are, are not considered as an entertainment people go there as i said before because they think that they will be exposed and they will they will be elevated it's mm -hmm. exactly the same with music and even more in a sense it's 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 i i cannot even speak enough how important it is um so yes indeed us artists individual artists should speak about it as much as much as we can and if the numbers would grow it will eventually i think make a big big effect so mm. it, it, it's very very yeah. important um you have been now in in different countries in lockdown because you said you you were in in america and also in yeah. in yeah. israel yeah. could you yeah. see could you see uh the difference in in the value of art there you know in in support and and in governments that that uh not just in a not just in a sense of of financial because financial is the one side but the fact that they were trying they were trying to get uh, solutions for artists to be able to to perform or or even in smaller groups yeah um yeah i also spent some i think that the greatest support actually of artists uh but it has been the case i think before corona is, is still in europe uh art is being valued at uh, more than any other place uh, of course it's a, europe is very very big and in some places more than others but nevertheless if as a whole if you compared it um the art still is held at a higher esteem in in europe than in the states and surprisingly more so than in than in israel also um because now things look very nice in israel but in fact the arts was the first to shut down and the and the and got the least money from the government sports of course is more uh, in the fashion so you know the, the the football teams got a lot a lot of money very, very quickly whereas the orchestras i mean there has been an orchestra that was founded i think in israel in 19 in the 60s and it's just closed i mean how sad is that a whole chamber mm -hmm. orchestra a very fine one and a lot of very fine players have to they, they are now they have not they have not no place of work um so i think that europe has been doing the best about that in terms of support um I hope that in in the states things are changing now and it's looking a bit more brighter as well 
due to many different changes that have been done recently. Um, and, and there is an endowment for the arts and that the new president has been speaking, you know, that would support. Uh, so I, I, I choose to look at the brighter side. I think things are looking brighter now, but at the end of the, t at the, end of the day, it comes a lot to money and there must be a great sum of money that would be channeled towards the arts, whether it's in Israel and the States and in Europe. I mean, Germany has been doing quite, you know, very good about it, but uh, without money, Unfortunately, I, in an ideal world, you will not need it. But without money, it, it a lot of institutions would keep on closing, and that's horrible. Mm. So hopefully, we we will see the change with with some support from the government. It would have to. It would just have to happen. And and of course, sponsors that was, uh, that would help. Yeah. Um, but do you think that uh, because in America? Most of the orchestras are, and theaters are sponsored by by um, private companies, you yeah. know, not, not by the state. Uh, do you think that that could also be a, a good thing rather than governments sponsoring, that there would be some sort of, uh, um, you know, that, it, that it's not that the orchestras are not just dependent on either government or private or, sector. Yeah but that there's a combination so that when the situations like this happen or that, uh, you know, there, there's more initiative or there's more, so that it doesn't become this uh, political thing, that it, that it rather comes about the art and about the development of the art. Uh, so that that, uh, that way of, of sponsoring or that way of supporting is, is better. Yeah, I, 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 a combination, of course, would be ideal. So not all the eggs are in one basket, like in many occasions, because then the moment they cut the plug, it's a death sentence for an, an, an organization. Um, but of course, it's easier said than done. Um, there are so many, you know, factors that, that, that go into play here. Um, I, I think, yeah, that they would have to change a bit the structure of how they manage things and they would have to have a bit longer visions of how to, to come back but healthily and in a way that would draw more attention and, and make real change uh, um, in order to really have a sustainable and and very flourishing organization um, indeed a lot of a lot of orchestras are they, they they got money from only one source perhaps it was a lot of money but when that was gone to, uh, the, they, they just have to say goodbye. Um, but we will have to see how, how to go forward now because even, even the sponsors, a lot of them lost a great sum of money and then they just, they will not have, be able to support as much. Uh, so I think the first step is the fact that the government would have to give the arts a great sum of money. And, and, and then we would need to know how to use this money because money is not enough. You need to have a plan of how to do it properly. Uh, it, of course, it's, uh, it would take years to, to do it properly, but but not just you know spend money very easily and and, and, not, and not thinking about it. Uh, the other thing that I think would be interesting is about tours. I mean, Vienna Philharmonic would have yearly tours all over Europe to the States. They would come usually in March uh, to Japan, um, and that would would I think at the, at first will not happen as often and as much and as long as well. Um, and that will be interesting because it's a very big source of income for the orchestras, uh, those tours, especially to Japan and the States. Um, but that nevertheless would give time and showcase and money to local talent. And, and I think that for the long term, it will, it will make financial sense and also and, in, in all regards, it will, it will make a big, big difference. Um, so we will see. It's a it's an interesting question of, of how things will will, will turn out. Um, but I am optimistic. I'm always keeping optimistic. Mm. Well, I I just think if if uh, you know many cities, many countries, um, and and big cities, for example, uh, market themselves 
um, by the arts. You know, so they market. They yeah. they will market. Come to come to uh, um, London and and all the the theaters. You know, and that that would be the always the top the top um, sort of incentive. You know, like yeah. um, come to see the museums and the and the the orchestras and and whatever. And yet, uh, you know, I, I, it's it's for me very strange why in these times that 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 the the art is not seen as this, uh, an, uh, you know, this this main focus or how do we get that started again? And that is if 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 the if the argument is about money, then I would say. Well, that is one argument to have is that the arts have always brought in money uh, for the for the cities and for the yeah. government. And um, but then on the other hand, I'm thinking about we are talking about health now, and we're talking about a pandemic, um, and that we also need the arts uh, for our health, for our mental health, for for healing, for, you know, we, we only have to look at science to see how the effect music has on healing, you know, on cells yeah. of the body, uh, that this should be the priority. Yeah, I, I, I it's, it's very, very true. Um, and music is, is everything in a sense. Um, you know, a, a lot of people think that they 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 put the the radio on and they do a lot of other things. But when you hear great music, it, it's it's so much more than that. It's uplifting. But you know, I I could say hundred words because it's really all these. It's it's it goes in so many ways and it means so so much. Uh, and and I truly believe that. The government will finally now understand because when people would start going to concert, I mean, the moral of the people is very, very low. They, they can't go anywhere. You have to wear a mask and there is no interaction. And, and, and the moment that then you go to a concert and you hear such music making, all of a sudden you will be a, a transformed person, really. I mean, at, at yeah. that much. Um, so hopefully i mean we understand that and many more of course but hopefully the governments would understand how how important it is uh because the moral of the people is very 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 low uh, a lot of mm -hmm. depression uh, a lot of pe people also kill themselves i mean how sad is that and yeah and i i of course it doesn't mean that you will then go to a concert and all the problems are solved it's mm -hmm. not the case but it's a step to, to solving something it's it's a it's opening a door it's opening a window for a, something brighter something better um, and 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 that on its own is wonderful yeah sorry this was lily now <laughs> <laughs> um, but as a on a lighter note yes did you do anything exciting uh, during lockdown, well, I say exciting, I mean something that you've never had time to do before. Um, well, I, 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 I always liked eating well. Um, yes. You know, it's one of the delights <laughs> before concerts yeah. and after concerts. You explore different cuisines. Um, and I, I enjoyed cooking, but never to this degree. And I found the kitchen. Um, and and so I spent a lot of time in the kitchen exploring oh, really? a whole era of of uh, new cuisines that I had never dreamed of cooking, yeah. uh, and I, I I enjoyed it very much. In fact, mm -hmm. um, so that's number one. That's something that I never really had the time, and I hate doing dishes also. So <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I, would always, <laughs> I would always run away from it. Uh, the other thing is that uh, we spoke about teaching. I would normally only have time if I would play a concert, I would give a, a masterclass before. I would never really have the time to really teach properly. Um, but because this, the schedule, I mean, there were concerts, but of course it was not as hectic because sometimes there were complete lockdowns and you had to be home mostly. And I saw I had more time for teaching. So stuff that I would usually turn down, I, I actually taught mm -hmm. a number of students 
uh, from from all over actually, uh, which was very interesting because you learn from it. I really, mm. I, you, know, you, you you have to preach a lot of things, and then you think, oh, I should also maybe listen to me <laughs> to myself. Mm, mm. Yeah. Um, and I enjoyed it very much actually. At mm. first, I thought that I will not as much, but I I it's it's very gratifying to see that you had some impact uh, on changing perhaps the line of thought of someone, of putting them in the right track. Um, so I, I enjoyed it because it's uh, it's also a responsibility and you have to do it properly. Um, mm. I, I don't think it's very nice or serious to see someone once every month. I mean, it's it's fine, but it's serious teaching have to be done on a weekly basis, if not twice a week. And I finally had uh, some time for it and I, I enjoyed it very much. And of course, reading, um, you know, and just spending, well, for me, I, you know, I grew up in Israel, but I left early on and I come often to play here and I spend time with friends and family here, but always for a short period. And I'm always busy. There is always something going on. And finally, I had time to, to actually live for, for longer than a week in Israel a bit. Uh, and it was very nice. I mean, for me, I think it was it was quite lovely. Um, so yeah, so and so probably for your family too. For your family, I, I they hope must... so. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> That's for them. To, yeah, I I think yeah. Um, so that was very nice uh, for, for sure. But um, um, but I yeah. do miss you know the traveling. I mean, I, I did it. I did, I think, quite a bit of traveling for Corona time, but it's, of course, not at the same volume as before. And I'm so used to it, and I, so I, I, I miss it. And I think it's time now to, to, to get back to that. And I think it would also, I would enjoy and appreciate it even more now. Mm. Yeah, I think this, this, the slowing down was also good for everybody and for families, you know, and for people getting together and... And uh, as you say, you know, for you to spend a little more time doing the things that you normally don't have time for. So, um, yeah. you know, maybe that also is part of, of um, also, you know, in, in, in an artistic way, I think artists are very sensitive also. And, and I wonder how uh, music and, and artists will now after this um, approach uh, their careers and and how they produce music or how they you know do the concerts and things like that so do you think it will have an effect I, I think to a degree it will I mean of course look uh, well there were people that, that, that you know I, I, I mean I, I actually took the time to practice uh, sometimes even more because um, you oftentimes between concerts you don't really have the, the time to do the real work because you, you always have something around the corner and all of a sudden you had more time to revise and review some things that you sometimes don't have to uh but yeah i think that i think that big tours will not happen as at least not in the coming year as you know if you would have a one month or one month one and a half month those tours will not happen as fast anymore. Um, so that's the, the very, very big um, implication. Um, so I, I think that, that we would have to find the right rhythm um, of, of when to travel and how to travel. And, but I think music making will become even better because um, you are so hungry to, to go and perform and share your, your, your music, you have something to say and, and you want to and, and you, you were not able to, and so I, you, you have to do it. Um, and if this hunger is not there, you should not open the case of the violin, then you really should do, or, or piano or whatever it is, or sing, um, the hunger must be there. And I think the hunger now is huge. So I think music making would, it got an injection of electricity, of, of new life, so I think in that regard, it's, 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 it's going to be even better. Mm. Yeah. I think so. I, I, I hope, you know, that I, I don't think anybody comes out of this unchanged. And 
exactly like you say, you know, there was more time for doing these exercises or, or practicing the way you, you couldn't have done and that we yeah. had, you know, that you had more time for that. So, yeah, uh, yeah that would be great. But um, Ozzy, just one more question. What is your yes. wish for when this is all over? My wish, I can't wait to go play a concert and not arrive to the hall wearing a mask hand sanitizing my hands and you know to 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 give an elbow oh, yeah. to the conductor i want to make music to a full hall and i want to hug my friends when you know when you see them and that you go then to have a nice meal and you're not scared that you are too close or you know it's uh, it's quite a toll it, it takes on you this social distancing Mm -hmm. um and so i can't wait to, to just get back to to the norm so you don't have to think about it uh, because the norm became that you think about it all the time uh, um and, and it takes a bit of, of the enjoyment oh i have to take i have to be careful i have to to stay mm -hmm. away uh not to mention that playing with a mask is is a tragedy <laughs> it's, yeah. it's horrible um yeah so i i, I can't wait for us to you know to just come back to normal life and and i think that also we would come back to normal life with a new appreciation because we were uh, deprived of so many things so i think we would learn to appreciate it more um so i can't wait for all of that to come to complete normality and 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 that's it <laughs> yeah oh i i do agree with you that the the contact you know this uh, I'm also uh, I'm in the habit of touching people when I talk to them, you know, like yeah. and and um, you 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 have to be so careful to do that, you know, yeah. and and also a hug and just that that warmness. And I agree without the mask as well, um, yeah. so that we could see see people smile, <laughs> not yeah, just with their eyes, but yeah, <laughs> with the their whole thing. face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, it yeah. would be wonderful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ozzy, this was so wonderful to talk to you. Thank you so yeah. much for your time. No, thank you. It's such a wonderful thing that uh, you're doing to shred the light um, on this thank neglected you. area. Um, and you're doing it so diligently and for, for such a while. It's I think it's of utmost importance. So very glad to talk to you. And hopefully uh, we'll see you in Vienna when this is Oh, I hope over. so. Yeah I, <laughs> yeah, I must just say the way you are, uh, um, the, the energy you get from the audience, well, this is the energy I get from the artists. It's, uh, I'm, you know, I've met wonderful, wonderful people here in Vienna and also now on Zoom. And uh, yeah, so, so this is, for me, it's, it's uh, so great and such a privilege to be able to do that. But mm -hmm. I, I really wish that I could meet you in person. So please, if you come to Vienna, uh, just write to me. I will uh, Most certainly. grab a quick coffee if you're busy. Yeah, no Zoom, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And Thank have you. a lovely evening. You too. All best Thank wishes. You, Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.